In this video, I'll show you how to compile Hello World with a decompiler built from source on Linux. This way, you'll be ready to start hacking on DMD and make modifications. If you want to follow along, I recommend using Linux as well, but most of what I'm going to talk about also applies to other platforms. For Windows, I'll make some textual hints with the differences. First, I'll explain a bit how DMD operates. So let's invoke the program on the command line with my source file as argument. As you can see, it created a hello executable as output. And there you go, hello world. However, while it was done in one command, there were actually four components responsible for this. First, there's DMD, the compiler itself. It read our source file and generated code in the resulting hello.o file all by itself. But to actually turn this into the runnable executable, it needs to be linked with the runtime, the runtime library. DMD can generate code for simple constructs, such as if statements or integer math, but more complex routines, such as throwing exceptions or allocating memory with the garbage collector, are implemented as library functions. Thirdly, because we import std.std.io, we also need to link Phobos, the standard library. This includes functions that are common or useful to have, but which are not essential for language features to work. The runtime and Phobos, those separate components, are combined into a single library called libphobos2.a. Finally, there's the program combining hello.o, the runtime, and Phobos into the final complete executable, the linker. This is the only component not written in D. On Linux, it will use the systemc compiler, GCC in my case, as a driver to the system linker. This way, the C runtime library, which D runtime depends on, is also linked. Let's compile hello.d again, now with the dash v verbose flag. At the end of the output, you can now see the final link command, cc, our hello.o file, a bunch of flags, and Phobos. This includes the runtime, by the way. They are combined into a single library file. So where is this file located? Here I opened the contents of a DMD release. This is what you download from the official website or what your package manager gives you. In the folder Linux slash bin64, you can find the DMD executable, some other tools which we can ignore for now, and a dmd.com file, which tells it where to find the runtime and Phobos. This is not hard-coded in the compiler. If you import std.std.io, it will find it at this path. In lib64, you can find both shared or static libraries for Phobos, including the runtime, like I mentioned. And in src, you will find the sources for Phobos and the runtime. Even though we have the library in pre-compiled form, we still need sources to make imports work, and also for templates, which can't all be pre-compiled. We identified the things we need, so now let's set up a build environment so we can create our own decompiler. Go to the DMD repository on GitHub and fork it. I already have a fork, so I'm going to use that. There used to be a separate repository for the runtime, but it's now combined with the DMD repo, so the only other repository we need to fork is Phobos. Then, clone both forks in the same directory. It's important for them to be in the same directory, otherwise the DMD and Phobos repository cannot find each other when building them. Alright, so it's now in here. Next, clone Phobos. All right, cloning is done. So now I can go to DMD. All right. Enter the compiler slash source folder and run the build script build.d. And I'm going to set the build environment variable to debug because by default it does a release build and I want to do a debug build for now. By the way, the build script is written in D, so I'm using rdmd, which is a tool that takes a D source file, compiles it, and runs it, kind of like a script. 
Okay, it's done. Now if we go to DMD, uh, generated Linux debug 64, this specifies the platform, the build type, and the architecture, we can find our own DMD executable and our own configuration file, which points to the uh, Phobos folder we have cloned. Now to try it out, I'm going to create an alias to it so I can easily invoke it. Don't put spaces around the equal sign here, by the way. There. So, my DMD hello.d. Oh no, it cannot find the source code for the runtime library object.d. That's because we haven't built the runtime yet. So I'm gonna now go to the Phobos repository. Phobos and the runtime are currently still being built with a make file. So at the root of the Phobos repository invoke make.f and pass the posix.mac file and specify the same build type as the compiler. And since Phobos depends on the runtime, it's going to build the runtime first, which it's doing now. So if you only want to build the runtime, you can go to the dmd slash the runtime folder and invoke the same make command there. And now it has also created lib Phobos, which you can see in the generated folder. Again, Linux debug 64. And, and it has also copied the the runtime sources to the the runtime slash import folder, which will solve the error we had. So, trying it again, my dmd hello.d, oops, wrong directory. All right, so let's remove hello and hello.o. And this time compile hello world with our decompiler. And there you go. That concludes this video. In the next video, we're actually going to use this setup and make some actual changes to the decompiler. But until then, have a nice day.